I'd like to invite the families, that uh, the parents, the children we're going to be dedicating today. Y'all come join me on the stage. The rest of you, you may be seated for just a moment. Hi, y'all. Come on. This is amazing. How many did we dedicate in the first service? I can't remember. We had a bunch. Six or seven, right? Yeah. Man, our church is growing one way or the other, isn't it? Come on. Y'all come on in. Come in tight. Ah, this is awesome. All right. We can't. Man, can you play and so he doesn't have to? <laughs> I love you, Johnny Day. <laughs> My name is John. I'm the pastor here at the Hills. And when my wife and I planted the Hills over a decade ago, we had the vision of things we, we were excited about. And we we're, were excited about marrying folks. And we we're excited about, uh, about pe- people graduating and dedicating babies. And so this is always one of our, our favorite times. My wife is in San Diego right now. Uh, it's a tough life, but somebody's got to do it, right? San Diego. <laughs> Love you, baby girl. She said she's praying for, for all of you guys as well. Before we begin, let me just, let me read a scripture to you. Psalms 127 and 3 says this, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. So God has given you a gift. Each of you have a gift and each of you have a reward. And with that reward comes a responsibility. And that's what today is really all about. We, we call this a child dedication, but in reality, it's a family dedication where you're making a commitment uh, to God for your children. So in just a moment, we're going to be having you take a covenant, but I first of all would like to introduce these children uh, to, to, to the church. Jordan, will you come join me? For just a moment, hold this. All right. Who do we have here? Samuel. Samuel. Hi, Samuel. How you doing? Don't worry, I'm not taking you. Everybody say to hi to Samuel's little polo shirt. My man. Hey, bud. Y'all didn't scare him at all. Look at my man. Hey. <laughs> all right. Who we got here? This William. William. Hi. Hi. He says, my name is William. My friends call me Billy, but you can call me William. Right? <laughs> Everybody say hi to William. Ain't he handsome? Look at all those people. They all love you. Oh, yeah. So he punches me in the nose. That's awesome. Come, Will. Give me them cheeks. Give me them cheeks. Hi. Man, y'all make some beautiful babies. How many of y'all have? 17 now? Three. Almost. Look at this, y'all. Tell me her name. That's right, you told me. This is Ava. And we're going to be dedicating her cheeks next week. So that's the plan. <laughs> I love those, those little neck rolls. There's mama. Oh, my goodness. Hi. Oh, come here, hair. Who we got? Shepherd. Oh, Shepherd. What a great name. All I got was John, and you got Shepherd. But I am a shepherd. There we go. Look out there at those people. Look out there. Everybody say hi to Shepherd. He don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> my, man, my man, he don't want to see y'all. He doesn't like you guys. <laughs> hi, bud. He wants that microphone. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you. So, parents, I'm going to ask you to take a covenant today. Parents, so that your children may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you commit to model godliness and grace in your home and relationships? Do you commit to protect your children from evil influences by teaching them to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit and trust in God's word, that they might one day trust him as Savior and walk in devotion and obedience with him? If so, please respond with, we do. Hills family, those of you that are parents, you know that parents cannot do this alone. Amen? It it takes a family, bigger than a family. And so we want to commit to you as a church family that we're going to walk alongside you as you raise these, these little precious pumpkins. So Hills family, so that these children may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers, do you commit 
to pray for these families, to help teach and train these children the ways of the Lord, that they might one day trust him as Savior and walk in devotion and obedience with him. If so, please respond by saying, we do. That's amazing. Jordan, I want you to come with me. Jordan is our associate pastor. He's also been our kids pastor for a long time, our family pastor. And Jordan, I just want you to come alongside me. We're gonna pray a blessing. Families, would you just stretch your hand out over these, these couples right now? Lord, we just pray for each and every one of these precious children. Pray for these families. That God, you would bless them indeed in every area of their life, that you would bless them. I thank you, Lord. Every one of these children, Lord, were given a destiny by you. We know that is true. And God, your word says that even before they were formed in their mama's belly, that you had a calling on their life. And we agree with that calling. And we commit to walk alongside these families as these children fulfill that destiny that you have for them. Lord, we speak right now against every every plan of the enemy that would try to divide this family, that would try to come against the destiny of this child. We know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So there is no fear in Jesus' name. Place a hedge of protection around these children. Shepherd them, Lord. Be with them. I pray, Father, that you would give the parents wisdom. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would draw these precious babies to you until there would be a day that they would give their lives to you and follow you for the rest of their life. That's right, buddy. And everybody just say in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So families, uh, we, something that we do at every uh, dedication is we give you a certificate so there is an official uh, uh, dedication certificate that's been signed by the pastors. I recommend you, yeah, anything else? Real quick, just before we go. No, he's good, all right. <laughs> My man. Uh, what was I saying? We have, a, it's an it's official dedication certificate, so I recommend you frame it. And if you have a place you send your kids for time out, just put it right there so they can <laughs> look at it. And they're all going to sleep through the night now. They've been dedicated. No more terrible, poopy, blowout diapers or anything. It's just everything's fine now. But we do have a Bible for you as well. So their very first Bible from the Hills. And we're just honored, honored to be a part of this. Hey, Hills family, would you just, uh, just give these folks a great big hand today? It's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. All right, let's all stand. How about we worship the Lord just a little bit more today? Does that sound good? He's been so good to us. He's faithful. Sing all my life. In all my life, you have been faithful. Yes, he has. In all my life, you have been so, so. Well, 
good morning, Hills family. Uh, my name's Jordan. I'm one of the pastors here at the Hills, as uh, Pastor John just said. Uh, so glad that you guys have joined us this morning, and what a great morning to join uh, some powerful worship, some uh, baby dedications. There's nothing like to get you in the spirit um, like dedicating some babies. So um, if you're a first-time guest with us, thank you so much for joining us, uh, whether you're just in town for uh, watching some grandbabies being dedicated or, or you're just trying out the Hills for the first time. We're honored that you've made the Hills your home church this morning, and we would love to, to meet you and to know who you are. So after service, please stop by the info bar in the lobby. We have a special gift that we'd like to give you just to say thanks for being here. And if you're joining us online for the first time, please email us at info at the hillsnashville.com. We would love just to know who you are and, and where you're joining us from. We pray for all of our first time guests by name uh, every week. We can't pray for you by name unless, you know who, unless we know who you are. So make sure you let us know. We take that seriously. We have a prayer team that prays over that. Um, and if you have any prayer needs, feel free to share those with us as well. And that goes for all the rest of you also, info at thehillsnashville.com. Um, and if you are a Hills family member, we would like to invite you right now to make ready your tithes and offerings. Um, and, and thank you so much for your generous, faithful giving at the Hills. We can't do anything uh, in ministry without your tithes and your offerings. So thank you so much for being a part of that. Um, there's an envelope on the seat back in front of you. If you want to make that ready via cash or check, you can do that. We have a, a brand new box out in the lobby as you exit. Um, you can just drop that in as you leave today, or you can give online at thehillsnashville.com slash give. All right. So thank you all so much for that. Um, and we've got some really incredible stuff coming up uh, this fall. Um, and uh, one of my, uh, one of the things we have coming up this week, um, I'm so, so excited about this. This Wednesday, we have a brand new Bible study class called Echoes of Eden. And this gentleman right here, Dr. Matt McAvoy, is going to be teaching that class. I, I would love for you just to share a little bit about what that class is, is aimed at and what, what we're trying to accomplish with yeah, it. Yeah, thanks so much. They told me in the first thing that I had to put the mic on my chin, and I got a little nervous, and I think I actually did that the whole first time. People were looking at me weird. So I'm just going to hold it here. Any Tennessee fans here? This study is going to be as exciting as a Tennessee-Alabama game, so, um, you know, we'll just leave it there. In all seriousness, you know, we just dedicated a bunch of kids, and you think about there's a story in our culture and in the world that's out for your kids' hearts and minds, and there's a story that you hear every week that's out for their hearts and minds as well, and I just want to challenge the parents who are here to, to come. We're going to spend five weeks together. We're really going to dive in and see how is Scripture a unified story that leads to Jesus. John does this every week. I've never sat under a pastor who preaches more of the word. Um, but if you're maybe a new student to the Bible, or if you've always had questions, you're like, I get it. But like, what does Hezekiah have to do with anything? I promise we're not going to spend a lot of time in the Old Testament prophets, but we're going to create a bit of a structure to say, how would I steward my children in this? How would I steward myself in this? How would we answer that call that was up there to say that we want ourselves and our kids to know the Lord and to walk in obedience to him. And so this is really going to be a study in the framework from uh, the Garden of Eden all the way to what John hits every week almost in Revelation 21, 22, when all things are made new. How do I really understand that story? So that's what it's going to be about. Thank you so much. Um, and I, I was able to sit down and take a look at his notes. And as a, a person who studies the Bible for part of my profession, um, I, I just want to say he has an so much depth of wisdom uh, in the Bible, and he's spent his lifetime um, studying the Bible. And also, he's a physician, and uh, he teaches people at university level at one of the best universities in the, the whole country. So you probably can expect that he's going to be a good teacher, right? So um, definitely sign up for that class. Let us know you're coming. If you're bringing kids, we do have child care, but I need to know about it, okay? If I don't know, then the kids are just going to be running amok all through the church, which, you know, that's okay, too. Not, actually, let me know. We need to know. <laughs> so RSVP for childcare, um, but, but definitely everybody. We'd love to have a whole bunch of people out for this class. It's going to be awesome, okay? All right, well, Hills family, let's give all of our first-time guests a great big round of applause this morning. Very good. I'm excited about that. Uh, I told him in the first service, if I was as tall, big, and good-looking as Dr. Matt and had his voice, my ministry would be incredible. But I got what I'm working with. I'm really excited about this. Thank you so much, Dr. McAvoy, for agreeing to do this. And he's always so encouraging to me uh, uh, about my messages. And, uh, and I'm excited to, to have you unpack some of that for us today, uh, this, this week. Uh, I want to remind you real quick, we've been telling you about this, but uh, on Saturday, October 29th, we're having our annual Fall Fest. And it is a lot, a lot of fun from 4 to 6 p.m., 
We're going to have food. There's going to be inflatables for the kids. Dad, stay out the inflatables unless we ask you to do it, all right? It's going to be a lot of fun. And then we also have, uh, back by popular demand, Mr. Steve, the music man. He was a blast last year, has a full band, and it is so much fun. The kids love it. So if you have kids, children, I'd recommend you to come out October 29th, 4 to 6. Uh, even if you don't have kids, this is a great opportunity for us to meet some folks in our neighborhood. Every year we have people that have never been here on a Sunday that come by. Uh, matter of fact, yesterday I was flying back from, from Houston, and I was on the plane and uh, happened to overhear a guy in front of me talking to another gentleman, and he was saying, you know, I, he said, I just haven't been to church in, in 20 years. I just, just couldn't find a church that I could go to, and he said, but this, man, this church in my neighborhood this summer, they did this thing for the neighborhood, and it was like stuff for kids, and they had food and face painting, and, and he said, I, I kind of walked up, and, and I said, I'm not a member here. Is it okay? And they, oh, man, this isn't just for members. It's for anybody. And he said, I had never been to a church where non-members were welcome. And that's sad, first of all, right? And he said, man, they just welcomed me in. He said, so we showed up on church, church on Sunday, been going there for six months, and I found my home church. And so I would encourage you, show up. October 29th, be a smiling face. Look for new people. Let them know where they can find food, if they need the restrooms, those kind of things. And let's just, let's just host, host our neighborhood. Are you ready for the word today? Yes. Come on, those of you that have come in to just see baby dedications, could y'all help me out a little bit? Because I don't know that the hills are ready. And I'm going to do this almost every Sunday. Somebody online, give us a thumbs up. Come on, are you ready for the word today? Come on. Yeah. Love it. His word is powerful. His word is effective. The word of God. I've been in a series called Reigning. Uh, we've been over the past six, seven weeks, we've been talking about where we're supposed to be in our relationship with the Lord and the life that we're supposed to be living, that we're called to live, and that it's not one of crawling on our bellies, but it's one of ruling and reigning with him, seated with him in heavenly places. If you have not been able to be here, I would encourage you to go back and watch those online. We have also available on podcast as well. Now, let me read a scripture that I read last week and, and dove into it a little bit, but I want to revisit it just for a moment, sort of as a recap, but also because I really like the scripture. Colossians 1 and 12 says this, always thanking the Father he has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Five things that this scripture tells us that God does. He rescues us. Aren't you thankful that he rescued you from the life that you used to live? Amen? Thankful he rescued me. I don't know about you, but before I found him, life was I wasn't doing real good by myself. So I am thankful that he rescued me. Secondly, he transfers us. So he rescues me, and he transfers me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Everybody say transfer. transfer. Don't have to go through any immigration. Don't have to get a visa or a green card. You don't have to learn all the ways of the new kingdom. He just transfers you. He doesn't wait to see if you're going to do good the next week before he transfers. Just immediately, as soon as you confess that he is the Lord of your life, you, you, he, he takes you and rescues you and doesn't just rescue you, but he transfers you from a terrible situation to a holy situation, into his kingdom. That word kingdom means the king's domain. It's where he rules and reigns. And, and the Bible says we're seated with him in heavenly places. So if he's ruling and reigning there, guess who else is supposed to be ruling and reigning there? Transfers us from a place of darkness into a place of light. It goes on to say he frees us. I'm thankful for that. He doesn't just save us and rescues us, but he sets us free. Anybody here that, that found yourself in some bondage before that he set you free from? Amen? Sets us free. Now, you may not be living free, 
But that doesn't mean that the chains are still on you. You may be sitting in a prison cell and the door is open and the chains are at your feet. You just need to have a realization that you are set free by the name of Jesus. Next, he forgives us. Every sin you've committed, the sins that you, you, I don't know about you, but I've committed a couple of sins before. Anybody else? And that was this morning, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but he forgives us, wipes the slate clean. That word forgive means to give for. That's what he did. He gave his life for us and forgives us of our debt. All of these things are all for this very first statement. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people. The reason that he rescues us, that he transfers us, that he frees us and forgives us is so we can live in the inheritance that already belongs to us. I've been doing ministry for a long time, over three decades now, and I traveled many of those for at least for 10 years. I traveled full time and I was in a different city almost every week at a church or a conference or, or a crusade. And, and what I have found in those times and as a pastor, lean in and listen to me, is that the majority of believers have not grabbed hold of that moment, that scripture right there. Most of us are not living in the full inheritance that belongs to us belongs to me. And I want us to get this revelation today. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep preaching it until we get it. I'm going to keep preaching it until I get it, right? This, this is, this is what, I, what I feel like God is, is wanting to get to us as a church, not just the hills, but to the big C church, the church all over the world, is that God has called us to live in everything that he's given us. My man is still a man in me, right? And so watch what happens. He takes us, he picks us up from the kingdom of darkness, transfers us into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, frees us, rescues us, does all that stuff, and watch what he does. And then he takes us and puts us right back into the kingdom that we came from. Except this time, we're free, we're rescued, we're forgiven. And now we're walking in that place with a new identity, with, with a new authority, with a new inheritance. That identity means I now am a, a child of God. I'm family. I'm a son and a daughter of God. And so that's why I act the way I act. That's why I live the way I live. And, and as I said, I've said before, don't stay away from sin because you're scared that you're going to go to hell. Stay away. Well, that may be part of it, but stay away from sin because that is not what God wants his children to do. That's it. I don't, I don't do things or not do things so I can be a child of God. I don't do things and I do things because I am a child of God. Something we used to say in our house, hey, you know, we don't do that in the Ragsdale family, Okay. Our kids may go hang out with somebody and they'd come back with their culture, what their family, well, they let them do it. Okay, well, that's fine. They can let them do it. We don't do that here. We don't act that way here. This is how Ragsdales do stuff, all right? And this is what I'd love to say to us. When, when, the, when the Holy Spirit convicts you, hey, 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 that, don't, no, 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 no. That's not how a child of God does things, right? And that, that's the understanding I want us to get. We've been transferred, rescued. We are now citizens of another kingdom, but we've been placed back into this kingdom so that we can walk in our full identity, that we can walk in our full inheritance, which means I am an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus. I don't know if we quite get that. Everything that Jesus has access to, we have access to. We're not living at that level yet, but I think it's because we just don't know that we can or we don't think that we need to. I fully believe that if we're going to do everything God has called us to do in this earth, we've got to get this revelation because we're just not going to be able to do what he's called us to do if we're not getting access to everything he has for us. 
all of the wisdom and understanding and counsel and knowledge and might. The Bible talks about this in Isaiah, the seven spirits that are before the throne. You find these in Revelations as well. The spirit of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, and might. Then you go to the gifts of the spirit, the word of wisdom and word of knowledge, tongues, interpretation of tongues, the gift of prophecy, discerning of spirits, the gifts of healings, the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. Those, this is ours. We have access to that. How many could use some joy? All right, raise your spouse's hand for them right now. Come on now. How many could use some J-O-Y in your life? Now listen, I'm not talking about your joy like the kind you felt when UT won yesterday. It was, actually, it was actually the only time I'm cheering for UT when they play Alabama, all right? I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan. I'm a little worried about two weeks from now, y'all. I just got to tell you, I'm a little nervous after yesterday. But I'm not talking about that joy you felt when he knuckleballed that, that ball through the field goal. Y'all, yesterday was the first time, and I hope some of y'all are watching, the first time I have ever been at a, at a University of Tennessee watch party. I don't know if I'll ever be the same. There were so many ups and downs and words spoken that no pastor should ever hear spoken. <laughs> In front of the kids, come on, man. Oh my goodness, it was something else. I'm not talking about that joy. Because that joy, just like that, can be gone. Right? I'm talking about God's joy. How much joy does he have? The Bible says he sings over his kids. Zephaniah says he dances over his babies. He's Bends around. That's the, you don't picture God that way, but that's the kind of joy that God has over us. That's what he wants us to have. That love. What kind of love? Not my love. God's love. How much love does he have? His patience. Not mine. How much patience does God have? Well, we're still here, so that ought to tell you. Access to that. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, we have access to the inheritance. We do. I love that you told me. I receive it, man. <laughs> I receive it. His identity, his inheritance, and his authority. Everybody say authority. So picks me up, rescues, frees me, transfers me, picks me up. All this stuff cleans me up, makes me holy, makes me blameless, and puts me right back here. And that seems unfair, but now I'm here as a citizen of there. And I've got his identity, I've got his inheritance, I've got his authority, which means I am a representative of another country, of another kingdom. Look at this scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.20. We are Christ's ambassadors, making, God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ and we plead, come back to God. This is spoken several times in 2 Corinthians 5. And matter, matter of fact, I would recommend each believer to read and to master 2 Corinthians 5. I was a young adult pastor for a long time. And we, would have a, we had a, uh, a young adult service on Sunday evenings. And, uh, and it was at 5.15. And 2 Corinthians 5.15 was our motto. And so we called the, 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 the night 5.15. And I spent a year and a half on 2 Corinthians 5. I preached for one year and a half on 2 Corinthians 5. I'd recommend you to read it. Read it in every translation you can read it in. Master it. But throughout 2 Corinthians 5, he will talk about you are an ambassador. You are a minister of reconciliation. This is what you've been called to. You, this, is, this is what God is. You are an ambassador. We are Christ's ambassadors. Look at this. Look at what an ambassador means. They're going to bring it on the screen for you. And I just want to thank our team that does such a great job bringing stuff on the screen for us that are auditory and visual processors. Amen. Those of you watching online, I know you appreciate it as well. An ambassador is an accredited diplomat acting as the official representative of a nation. Sent to a foreign land, the ambassador's role is to reflect the official position of the sovereign body that gave him authority or her authority. So you and I picked up, given a brand new citizenship 
in a country that we should have never had access to. But because of the blood of Jesus, we have access to. Given identity, authority, inheritance, placed back into the kingdom of darkness as an ambassador. The old timers used to sing, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. That's a good word, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Because I'm an ambassador of another place. That's, I belong there. I don't, I, listen, I can tell you as a pastor, I've been convicted. We don't preach about heaven enough. We don't, you don't hear preachers preaching about hell or heaven enough. And I'm going to tell you why we don't preach about heaven. is because we don't need it right now. Life's pretty good, right? I mean, there's a minute clinic on every corner. And if that doesn't help, there's a Starbucks across the street. There is. Now, when the old-timers that wrote this song, I'm longing for heaven, this world is not my home, because their life was rough. You couldn't just go to a doctor. They didn't have a lot of money. They were, they were po, right? They, this, is, this is how most people lived. It was hard. And so they longed for heaven. We are pretty comfortable. But I think that God wants us to get to a place that we have a longing for the place that we came from. It's the place that I came from. It's the place that I'm going. So why wouldn't I start living like I'm a heaven person right now? Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. An ambassador. So you're sent as an ambassador to represent the culture of that Kingdom and every kingdom has its own culture. If you're taking notes, write these down because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be talking about these three things that every culture has. Uh, probably uh, probably next week. I've I've learned never to tell you that I am gonna preach something next week because the Lord always goes, "No, you're not." And I go, "But Lord, we promise." No, I didn't promise. You promise. So you just get back over here where I'm talking about things. All right. And so, uh, I, hopefully, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, I'm going to speak about this. Every kingdom has its own culture, and every culture has its own laws, its own languages, and its own currency. See, we deal in a different currency as kingdom citizens than everybody else does. Their currency is this. Our currency is that. We have a different language. We have different laws that... that that affect us and impact us because of our citizenship of another country. And as ambassadors, we represent the culture of heaven. And we advance the kingdom of heaven by allowing that culture to fill the earth. That's how you advance the kingdom of heaven. And that's God's will. You know that. What did Jesus say? Pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, thy what? In earth as it, in heaven. That's his goal. His goal is that the kingdom of heaven would come to earth. Not that we would just get raptured out and go there. No, that, yeah, thank God for that. But the fact that he wants it to start now. The earth is his and the fullness thereof. He wants it back. And we're the ones that help him set up this kingdom. How do I do it? By doing his will. Thy kingdom come is when his will is done. Every time, listen to me, lean in. This is very important. Every time you and I obey the will of God and the word of God, we advance the kingdom of God. I'm going to say that again. Every time we obey the word of God and do the will of God, we advance the kingdom of God. So I, here's what I found. If people think something is too easy, they will do it. If people think things are too hard, they won't do it. And so the gospel is so simple, and people, religion tries to complicate it, 
And we look at it and go, I, I could never do that. And so when we talk about, hey, let's advance the kingdom of God. I know you. I see you. There's about 80% of you that go, he's not talking to me. Because I could never do that. Now, if I had a stage, if I had a stage, if I had a microphone, if I had a lot of followers, if I was an artist, if I was a CEO, if I was this, this, you could just go down the line and just say, if I was that, if I was that. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that to advance the kingdom of God. You, by making a right choice today, advance the kingdom of God. When you shut your mouth and don't say what you want to say, you advance the kingdom of God. Ladies, just look at your husband and thank them. Say, baby, I'm proud of you. You're going to advance the kingdom of God today. I'm believing today. Right? How many get what I'm saying? you... When you decide to make a right choice with your children, when you decide I'm not going to text that person back, when you decide I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any more of that to drink, okay? When you decide I'm not going to snort that, I'm not going to cheat on that, I'm not going to lie about that, the kingdom of God gets advanced. All right, I think I'm meddling now, so let me move on. Every time we do the will of God, we're advancing the kingdom of God, and thus the culture of heaven becomes the culture of earth. I want, I want to hit real quick. I don't know how, much, how, much, how long I'm going to go. I mean, I know I'm not going to go long, so I'm not going to get very far into this. But I want to hit at least one point. I want to talk about a few of heaven's culture points we, we, we use the word culture points around the hills because a lot of people will call them values. We call them culture points because we, we want them to be points of culture. You can see them in our branding, loving, giving, living. These are some of our culture points. Loving passionately, giving ge- generously, living abundantly. These are, these are part of our culture that we talk a, a lot about. And so some of the culture points of heaven is, first of all, the culture of heaven is eternity. Eternity. And that's so different from the culture that we have here because everything we do is about time. Right now, some of you, since I said I'm not going to preach long, you looked at your watch and go, all right, we're going to find out, bub, because we've got reservations. So everything we do is about time. I don't have enough time. Oh, man, I just have too much time. You're taking too long. Man, that was too quick. I'm late. I'm early. How old are you? Everything comes down to time. In heaven, there, there is no time. It's eternity. And it goes, it's forever. As I've said before, eternity is not a long time, it's a no time. Just take time out of the equation. There's no ticking clocks in eternity. When I was a kid, I would hear the preachers preach about eternity. And I was raised in a Mississippi Pentecostal Church, and they preached on eternity every single Sunday. And it was like, that's what you heard. You, you're going to spend hell in eternity. Or you're going to spend heaven in eternity. Oh, what's heaven going to be like? It's going to be just like church all the time. I don't want to go to either one of them, all right? Don't want to go to hell. Don't want to go to heaven. If that's what it's going to be, hearing you preach for an hour and a half, okay, and her play off key on that piano, and he shouldn't be a singer. He should be an usher or something. So... Is this what it's going to be for eternity, right? Come on, can I get an amen from somebody? That man, I've been your church experience, but I can promise you some of your church experience was still, I don't want to do this forever. But eternity is not a long time. It's in no time. And so the culture of heaven is this. Everything heaven does has an eternal perspective. So when I bring the eternal perspective, culture of heaven to earth, I am now evaluating everything I do through an eternal lens. Every decision that I make, I'm thinking, what does this do to my eternity? How does this impact someone's eternity? You evaluate things that way. You, you begin to respond to people differently when you take on an eternal perspective. Things begin to shift and change for you. you you're more patient Let me say, not you, we are more patient. Instead of, as soon as the light turns green, the car in front of you doesn't move. Come on, can you give the guy a minute, okay? Just a second. 
Where do you have to go that a millisecond is going to mess you up? Come on, right? The, the fact that you would say things to someone in a car that you would never say to them that they were standing next to you. Can I get an amen? amen. I hate you as a person. <laughs> right? All because they nudged over into your lane just a little. You would never look at a person that elderly just bumped in you and say, I hate you as a person. You're a terrible human being. Never. Come on. Would you just nod your head? We would never. Okay, you get an eternal perspective. It starts to shift things. This guy has a soul. They're going to live somewhere for, for eternity. My children have an eternal soul. The Bible says that he has placed eternity in the hearts of man. So I'm looking at you as temporary, and I watch myself begin to change. And I, <laughs> I was at a funeral Friday night, and, and there was a lady I hadn't seen in a long time, a pastor's wife, and I, I leaned up. I, we knew each other well. I just grabbed her. I said, Eloise. And she just looked at me. I said, John Ragsdale. She said, John Ragsdale, your hair's turned gray and your cheeks got chubbier. <laughs> well, thank you, Eloise. You're beautiful. Right? So I watch myself morph and change, and you watch your spouse change. You watch your children change. You watch things grow, and you forget that as that body is dying, that soul never dies. It stays a living being that will live forever. See, that's the culture of heaven. It changes the way we think. I want, the, I want uh, Zoe to come out and help me. Let me close with this. And the culture of heaven is eternal. I could go for another 30 minutes, an hour on that one. We may revisit it some next week. The culture of heaven is eternal. And the culture of heaven is abundant. Everybody look at me. Abundant. Everybody say Abundant culture of heaven is abundant when you look at heaven some of y'all stop looking at me come back over here I called her out she has permission to be right there come over here look at me this is important because you need to get this tomorrow and Thursday I'm going to need this the culture of heaven is abundance when you read about heaven what do you read about extravagance the city is made of gold the streets are paved with pure gold. Pure gold is clear. It's, that's the streets. The gates are made, each of them, of a single pearl. Not gates of pearls, gates of pearl. That's how extravagant heaven is. But we don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience the extravagance of God, His grace and His compassion and His joy and His love and His peace. He just wants to lavish it on us. He wants to pour it out. Not a dab will do. He wants to do what do you want? Take it all. It's free. It's unmerited. I've... Look at 1 Corinthians 2.9. The scriptures mean this when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. How many of you have a big imagination? Like if you, okay, how many, if you, that $450 million lotto, that big billboard, how many have a big imagination what you could do with about half of that? Not anybody? Come on. Woo, been uh, thinking, dreaming, let's go. Let's do this thing. What would I do for my family and for our church and for the community? And what would I do for other countries? And what could the dreams that you have, the goals and the visions that you have, as crazy as you get, you won't even scratch the surface for what God has for you. The, it, 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 it hadn't even entered into the imagination of man everything that God has for you. And that is what we're supposed to represent now. The culture of heaven is eternal. So I'm supposed to be representing that as an ambassador now. The culture of heaven is abundant. I'm supposed to be representing that as an ambassador now. That when I walk into a room, even when I don't feel like it, the joy of the Lord is spilling out. And people just feel better because you were in the room. The love and peace and graciousness. And man, come on. 
How many know we could change the world without ever opening our mouth if we just walked in that abundance? And we represent that now. John 10, 10, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. This is what he has for us. This is what he wants for every human being. Listen to me, every human being. The guy that you gave a dollar to today to get a contributor newspaper from. God wants abundance for him. The physician that you will see tomorrow, God wants abundance. The CEO, the housewife, those babies that we dedicated, what does God want for them? Abundance. And he wants it for you. Can I just take my pastor hat off right now and just be authentic and honest? Good, because I don't really wear a pastor hat. I'm a John hat. That's all I have. I have a John hat. And I'm pastor at home, and I'm daddy on stage. And I'm a husband, and I'm a friend. I don't compartmentalize well. And so I just kind of who I am. I've had a therapist for uh, almost three years now. Dr. Rick Underwood is my therapist. My son's few Father's Days ago, they gave me two gifts. They said, we've got two gifts for you. We're giving you a therapist and hearing aids. The hearing aids are for us, Dad. The therapist is for you. And they said, Dad, we talk to therapists. Mom has a therapist. Who do you talk to? And I was like, well, I don't know. Myself. <laughs> and Dr. Rick has just been, it's been life-changing for her. It's been a lifesaver for me. I, I think every person should have someone in their life that they can just open up and talk to. And I don't know if you, those of you that, are, that do have therapy, uh, go through therapy, you know that it's, sometimes it just is kind of monotonous. I'm talking to this guy, and sometimes you have some breakthrough, and then sometimes like, man, what do we do there? But what I found is when it's consistent, it builds on itself, and then there's this moment where, pow, there's this breakthrough, and you have this light bulb illumination. And I had one a few weeks ago, and I was just being open with him. I said, you know, Dr. Rick, I sometimes I feel like a fraud, like that I'm not practicing what I preach. Maybe some of you leaders can understand this. You got to put a face on, you know? Parents, you can understand this, that you don't, certain things you don't share with your kids. You, you know, got to be the leader. But I, then I go home and I'm like, okay, are you really practicing that on Wednesday? Like, are you really seeing that abundance in your own life? And again, it's what we preach. Loving, passionately, giving generously so that we can live abundantly in every area of our life. It's what we've been preaching for a decade now as a church. It's everything we are. And yet, sometimes I evaluate my own life and I go, I, I'm not seeing that in that area. And I just said, I just, I don't know if I'm practicing what I'm preaching. He said, tell me a little bit more about that. And I said, okay. And as I was about to tell him, I heard the Holy Spirit. I heard the voice of Jesus. You know, it wasn't audible. John Ragsdale, you're my favorite. He didn't say that. That's how I hear him, though, when he talks to me. He always starts with, I'm his favorite. I don't know. But in that moment, I said, yeah, I'm preaching abundance for everybody. He wants abundance for you. He wants it for you. He wants to live this life. And, and all of a sudden, I heard the Holy Spirit. I heard Jesus drop in my head, and he went, hey, John, I want that for you, too. And maybe for the first time, in my ministry, I realize that what he wants for everybody else, he wants for me. Because I felt it was selfless, you know. I don't worry about me. Let's, let's do this for them. And it was a revelation for me. It was eye-opening for me. It was life-changing for me. Oh, me? You're not just using me as a vessel? You want that for me? And it changed my life. And I just, I wanted to share that story with you today to just tell you. I wish you could hear his voice say it over you. Because again, I know what some of you are saying right now. You're saying, this is a good sermon for him or for her. But you don't know me. You don't know my thought. You don't know what I do or what I you don't know. No, listen to me. I wish I could just take your face in my hands and say to you watching online right here, he wants that for you. He wants abundance for you. 
He wants more than you can handle. A, the promised land is overflowing with milk and honey. Well, why would you do that? It's wasted. No, it's for someone else. Why would he give me more peace than I need so I can give some to someone else? That's why. He wants that for you. And I want you to receive it. I really do. How many right now would just go, okay, I hear you. I'm in. Would just raise, I want to see the hands. I'm, I'm in. If that's for me, I want it, buddy. So, Lord, you see every hand right now. Do it, Jesus. Do it. Get, let us have this revelation that we're kingdom people. What you've called us to be, help us to live in that. Let's all stand. So usually when they come and play, then I'm quiet. But today I wasn't. So I know standing always makes me end the sermon. <laughs> Somebody give me a tissue. Is there a tissue somewhere or a handkerchief or something? Here we go. A diaper. <laughs> I'll take a clean one. Thank you, Lord. He wants it for you. Somebody watching online, he wants it for you. Right where you are. I know you feel isolated and alone. Hear his voice. He, he wants that for you. So why don't we right now, let's just, let's just make a commitment to move into that life. How's that sound? Just as a team. Come on, same team. Let's go. Let's just make a commitment that we're today at least going to make a step. And that's another one of our culture points is next steps. What is my next step? What do I, what do I, what can I do to step into that? For some of you, it's a belief system, a change of heart, a mindset, or maybe a choice that I'm, I'm going to do that this week, or I'm not going to do that this week. I'm going to think differently today when I walk into that restaurant, when I walk into that job tomorrow, to that school, when I, I'm, it's, I'm going to think differently. I'm going to have, I'm going to work I'm going to do everything I can to get my mindset where I'm thinking about eternal and abundance so that I can help set up his kingdom. And then I'm believing today, we do this every Sunday, we give you an opportunity to change your citizenship where you can, if you confess in your mouth, believing in your heart that he is the risen Lord, just like that, he rescues you, frees you, transfers you, all the stuff we talked about. I'm believing today we have folks, you're watching online, come on. Right now, I want to lead you in a prayer. And I want all of us to join in. It's a next steps prayer. Hills family, let's pray it together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word, for your Holy Spirit. I pray that you would cover me with your grace today. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. I confess that you are the risen Lord. I confess that you are my risen Lord. Now, this is important. I commit to take the next step that you're asking of me. I give you my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to live with you forever, beginning right here, right now, in Jesus' name. Hills family, let's celebrate these folks that prayed this prayer today. Come on.